Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. We are waking up with watches, and everything you see here is for sale. Reach out to me for pricing. I am T Masa with thewatchbox.com. I can't list all the prices in the description below, but I can always let you know via an email. T Masa with thewatchbox.com for pricing, and I am always looking to build inventory. Use that same email address if you want to buy, trade, or sell. We will buy one watch. We will buy an entire collection. We wire cash. We pay fast. We pay completely with no upper limit on value pay. I will buy your watch or your collection to buy, trade, or sell a watch. T. Masso at thewatchbox.com. So you asked me to lead off each episode with the thumbnail watch, and I'm doing that. Here you have a watch, the 116508 in yellow gold, launched at Ball's World 2016. Full yellow gold, full bracelet, Rolex Daytona, green metallic sunburst dial. It was launched alongside a white gold blue dial model. And for the first time, I found myself preferring the yellow gold variant. Why? because it's stunning. This watch is 40 millimeters and only about 12.3 millimeters thick, which means it wears well on a smaller wrist like mine. My wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference, but this watch would wear well on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference, and I've seen it done. It fits underneath the cuff. It is remarkably well loomed, as you can see, Rolex, chromolite blue loom, automatic winding, well loomed, 100 meters water resistant, and a three-day power reserve. There's a lot to love here. You can dress it up or dress it down. If you want the full visual impact, leave it on the bracelet. If you want to tone it down a little bit, throw it on a military olive green or a black or an anthracite Everest or rubber bee strap. Now you've muted the watch a little bit and made this an everyday companion. Even when you need to be more discreet, throw this on a rubber strap, it really changes it. Throw it on a NATO strap, you dress it down even more. So you need to think about this watch in terms of a range of aesthetic possibilities, not just how it looks at first glance on the bracelet. Now, of course, you get lots to love in the bracelet. Easy link, five millimeters of tool-free adjustment, removable links fixed by screws, solid case back as ever on a Rolex, a vertical clutch column wheel, and again, a true three-day power reserve, one of the most accurate watches you can buy. We take for granted that Rolex watches are going to be chronometers, but again, Rolex tests its watches will run no worse than minus two plus two seconds per day. Jump in to a different kind of Rolex, this one arguably even more collectible. Launched in 2014, discontinued after 2017, it is a short production run steel Rolex dive watch. This is the Sea Dweller 4000, as it's nicknamed, reference 116600. Back in its day, it was considered to be too subtle. It didn't loudly declare that it was a more expensive watch than the Submariner. 40 millimeters in diameter, clean low profile, not noticeably thicker than a sub at first glance, a lot of folks didn't think it was worth the premium because it didn't communicate wealth. Well, its subtlety and its rarity is now the selling point among collectors who couldn't care less whether the general population thinks this is a Submariner. Today, we all wish we bought one for the safe and one for the wrist. This watch, of course, cleaner than a sub. It still has the helium escape valve and a deeper depth rating, but without the Cyclops Eye magnifier due to the thicker sapphire crystal, it's actually a better balanced dial. Now you throw the watch on the wrist, it wears very much like a sub, which is to say, if you can wear a sub, you can wear this. Now, it's a little bit thicker, but as you can see, most of the thickness is in the case back, and it doesn't build up the profile of the watch. Easy to wear, very comfortable, good looking. It has a wonderfully accurate ceramic capped 120 click bezel that you can line up with the minute hand. So you've got an impromptu zero to 60 minute count up timer for your dives, or if you're just timing something on the surface. Of course, the watch has the 20 millimeters of glide lock adjustment that you find on a sub, 20 millimeters, two millimeters of adjustment each. So you've got 10 different detents, but you also, because this is a sea dweller, you get more than glide lock, you get flip lock. Over 50 millimeters of total adjustment, and it is remarkably sharp when, when you latch this shut, you can't believe, as compact as these components are, just how solid they feel. Honestly, something like this in a previous era of Rolex would have felt like tinsel. Today, it feels like the bolt of a fine rifle. And of course, double locking, you have the lift lock and then the clamshell lock, a very impressive watch that's wonderfully subtle. No one will ever guess you're buying and owning one of the most collectible Rolex watches of the 21st century. Sticking with Geneva, but going a little bit upscale, sticking with steel, we have a watch made in 600 pieces for the 2017 Patek Philippe Grand Exhibition in New York. One of the most extravagantly loomed Calatravas ever. This is the Calatrava Pilot 
5522A, 600 pieces, 42 millimeters in steel, a rare application of the caliber 324 automatic with center seconds and no date. Applique white gold numerals, blued broadsword style hands. As you can see, it is a substantial Calatrava. It is truly a sports watch, as within the pilot's watch genre, you don't really need a ton of water resistance. You just need the right look, legibility, simplicity, and at a glance comprehension. Now, you will note it's broad, it's flat, it's suitable for a wrist of about 14 centimeters circumference, but probably no smaller. You can see it really does fill out my wrist. It has the same counterweighted clevis style pin buckle you'll find on the 5525. Four. And then, of course, we've got the crosshatch contrast stitched aviator's calfskin strap. On the reverse side, you can see anti-magnetic movement, free sprung with a silicon hairspring, automatic winding, 45-hour power reserve. And if you look closely, you can see ghosted onto the reverse of the movement. It says Patek Philippe, New York, 2017. Again, 600 pieces made. They were originally retailed in the United States, but they're slowly fanning out around the globe. So you tend not to see these watches more than once in any given plate. Okay. In any given place, if that place is Geneva, you will see incredible things. So we'll start with two classics from F.P. Journe, both in the much sought 38 millimeter case. The Octoloon, here we have pink on pink on pink. So you have a pink gold case, you have a pink gold dial, and it is solid gold. We have a solid gold movement and rotor. So it's a hefty little 38. The 38 discontinued after 2015 is a much sought case. You've got some practical elements with the power reserve and the double digit date, and you have the romantic element with the moon phase double quick set for the moon phase and the date 120 hour power reserve polished steel bezel surrounding the silvered subdials for the hands the hours minutes and seconds the movement made of solid gold but my favorite detail is the rotor which features a barley corn pattern that radiates out from the center and it's just a good looking movement if you've ever wondered why the rotor is off center it's because it was displaced by dial side attachment points. As this movement was always designed to drive complications, it was necessary to offset the rotor on the reverse side to include the complication adapter on the dial. That's why those rotors are off-center. Now, if you want something a little bit more core for the F.P. Journe manufacturer as a whole, you can't do any better than a resonance or a tourbillon remontoire, and the first generation resonance is the most desirable. 38 millimeters in platinum, this one features the white gold dial, two 1212 registers, of course you set them independently, they are connected by resonance, but it is a dual time watch. You have a power reserve that works backwards, which is to say when fully wound it indicates zero, for zero hours since wound, that's a legacy of the marine chronometer. If the seconds hands aren't synced when you start them up, you can fly back using the trigger at four o'clock and sync them up, that's there because it takes takes about seven to 10 minutes for resonance to couple the two sides of the movement. So the hands might not be synchronized at first. Well, you can synchronize them using the trigger. Turn it all over. You can see the movement is made of brass and we can see the ratchet wheels. This is a resonance one. And for the resonance two, where you would have had rose gold bridges, you just see the pivot jewels of the barrel arbors. Here you can actually see their ratchet wheels. Brass is more collectible if you're an F.P. Journe collector. Rose gold is more valuable as a commodity, but we're not buying these as commodities. We're buying them as collectibles. Brass is more desirable. We have barrel, drivetrain, escapement, and balance. Totally independent. Two movements in one case. Nothing coupling them together but the resonance phenomenon. Parasitic emanations, vibrations basically, emanating from the escapements and the balances. Synchronize them to each other, but they beat an opposite position, which means if one should slow down or speed up, the other will auto-correct it by an equal and opposite magnitude. It is a self-regulating chronometer, and the two sides of the movement should be synced to run no worse than within five seconds of each other for 24 hours. You can see a couple of distinct elements from the past. We have the brass movement discontinued mid-2004, the 38 millimeter case discontinued 2015. We have the maker's mark of Eleanor, the French case maker that built F.P. Journe's cases right up through about mid-2008. We have the 02R, R is the reference, resonance, and 02, the cases year of manufacture. Remember, this model only came out in 2001, so this is a very early example, one of the first 200 resonances made. But 02, of course, the case back, case year of manufacture, that was discontinued, that stamp was discontinued about mid-2005. So a lot about this watch that is discontinued and highly desirable. A more extravagant Journe watch here, you can see the Santagraph 
in boutique form, but unlike most boutique Santograph, this one includes the full factory rose gold five-link bracelet, giving it a grandeur that a standard Jorn dress watch would not have. It's a boutique edition because it has the combination of the red gold case and the black dial, 40 millimeters. Of course, it also has a rose gold movement. It is called Santograph because it has a foudreon that represents one one-hundredth of a second's resolution. So you have that one second, 20 second, and 10 minute register, and three tachymeters. So in theory, if you've got the reflexes, you can gauge the speed of an object traveling between 36,006 kilometers per hour. It has two patents, one for this rocker system. It looks like a mono pusher, but note that I can stop and restart, unlike with a mono pusher. The reset system is a wonderful piece of horological theater. Turn it over. Here's the second patent. You can see the movement, caliber 1506, has a barrel right at center. The arbor of the barrel, basically its axle, drives the chronograph components, and the toothed edge of the barrel drives the time. As a result, when you activate this chronograph, you don't see the roughly 30-degree loss of balance amplitude that you get on a conventional chronograph when you start the complication. And, of course, it is a gold watch with a gold bracelet with a gold movement. It's very heavy. Nicely finished, you can see that it is caliber 1506, which means it is 15 French lean and diameter and 06 is the year work started on the movement. We'll do a wrist shot. My wrist once again is 16 centimeters in circumference. It's big. It wears larger than a standard Santograph, which is basically my way of saying that if you've got a 15 centimeter circumference wrist or better, good to go. If your wrist is smaller than 15 centimeters circumference, you might want to buy the watch as a collectible, but put it on a strap so it fits you. It's not going to fit smaller than 15 on the bracelet. That said, we've got a watch for you. If you've got that smaller wrist, but you want a big integrated bracelet, Gerard Perigo launched this model in 2017. Titanium and rose gold. It is the Laureato Automatic in 42 millimeters. It's only 11 millimeters thick. Screw down crown, 50 meters water resistant in the titanium variant. That makes it surface swimmable. There's a lovely pyramid pattern on the center of the dial. And then you can see rose gold hands logo and indices. The Laureato although it looks like many of the copycat watches of the modern era, was not a throwback watch evoking the 70s. It is truly of that era. It is a watch originally launched with a quartz movement and an integrated bracelet in 1975. So this watch is a throwback to that design heritage, albeit with a modern GP1800 caliber in the back. Now, the GP1800 is their more upscale automatic movement. It's rarely seen as the smaller and older and cheaper 3000 series generally occupies GP watches. It's bigger, which means it better fills the case back. It's more advanced, which means it's more rugged and keeps better time. And it has a longer power reserve of 54 hours rather than the 3300's 46 hours. So it's a bigger and better movement in a watch that has a bracelet that pulls straight down so it'll tuck around a small wrist. And though this is a 42, you could wear it on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference. And though it is a sports watch, it will slide underneath the cuff. Taking a quick look at the bezel, you can see how it's different from the Royal Oak, the Nautilus, and the Aquanaut. It is a physical fixture and a mechanical component of the case. So it actually has an interface that mates with a special tool at Gerard Perigo, and it screws into the front, meaning it is part of the case construction uh, in as much as it's threaded and sunk. This is a level of intimacy and interlock that you don't get with the other integrated bracelet sports watches. This is a much more substantial element of the design. As you can see, the bracelet's nicely executed, wonderfully supple. Removable links are fixed by screws, not pin sleeves. I wish Patek Philippe would do that. Okay. I have something that is very weird to show you, but it hails from some big names. What we have here is the second model from a company called you ready for this? Ba -ba -ba -ba. C3H5N309. So what are we looking at? It is the chemical formula for nitroglycerin. The model is the experiment ZR012, and it is a limited edition of 12 pieces. It is the product of designer Eric Giroux, MBNF, and Erverk. And you can see elements of all three here. In some ways, the design of the case presages the later MBNF Bulldog. Now, the dial is very much in the spirit of Erverk, though if we're honest, its design probably owes a debt of gratitude to the late Daniel Nebel and his Nordzeist machine time displays. So we have a look that is inspired 
again, unofficially by Daniel Nebel, officially by Felix Vonkel and his rotary engines. So the way this works, it's a manual wind movement with a 39-hour power reserve. You screw out the crown up at, I guess we could call that 12 o'clock, but I want to be clear, the watch is 55 millimeters from end to end and 44 millimeters wide, so it is a big piece. Once you start adjusting the watch, you could see the Erwerk engineering and design DNA, but again, I do think Nordzeit machine needs to be mentioned here. So right now, you are looking at 8.15. You follow the index along the arc for the minutes, and now you're looking at 9.45, and now you were looking at nine, or I should say you were looking at 8.45, now you're looking at 9.10. So we'll go back, I'll show you that one more time. You were looking right here, 7.45, 8.45, 9.45. You see, I'm outsmarting myself here. This is a very Baroque time display. Now the watch, of course, is everything you would expect from MBNF and Erwerk, and the C3 H5 N3 O9 models did not continue. The Swiss have a habit of being a little bit too clever with the way they name things, as we've had Atelier 7H38, Code 1159, and C3 H5 N3 O2. That said, it is an important collaboration by two of the great brands in independent horology today. And though it is huge, it will fit on a 16 centimeter circumference wrist, which is to say, this is definitely not a watch for the bashful or the petite. Taking one last look at how this thing works, it moves relatively slowly as there is no constant seconds display. And I will fire this up just so you can take a quick look. This is a little bit more like how a Vonkel engine will work in the Mazda RX-7 or Cosmo or RX-8. It's fun to play with the mechanism because you get a dynamism when setting it that's not immediately apparent when the watch is running. Fortunately, it's easy to do and fun. There is a power reserve indicator on the case back, and the entire thing is made of black zirconium, which is extremely hard to scratch. And if you look at all the extremities, the usual contact points where a PVD watch might have lost a little bit of definition and color. There's absolutely nowhere here whatsoever. From the bombast of independent horology to something that qualifies as downright discreet by the standards of its maker, launched in 2021 in 5N Red Gold, this is the Grupo Forci Balancier Contemporain. It is a watch that is simple, with three hands, a power reserve, and an enormous, slow-beating free-sprung balance. 39.6 millimeters in diameter. This is about as compact and wearable as a Grubel 4C watch has ever been. You can see it has the typical Grubel concave lug profile and the level of movement depth and finish that you expect from Robert Grubel and Stephen Forsey. And it's very important to note here that there's no compromise in the detail. It's a smaller Grubel, but it's not a junior Grubel. Take a look at the balance. It's free sprung adjusted in six positions. It has a handmade overcoil. It has a large balance bridge, both to brace against shock, but also with its huge stance to accommodate the enormous balance. You can see the balance has recessed bolts, which are used for the regulation. And once it fires up, you can actually see the escapement on the dial side. It has tremendous depth with a mirrored underlay. The bridges are all nickel copper zinc or my short that have been palladium coated to give them that silvery shine. You'll also appreciate that the hands at center are fire blue and they sit on their own lovely sort of tripod hand finished bridge. We have a power reserve scale in white gold that's been lacquered in red and black. We have a three day manual wine power reserve. You can see the barrel poking through on the dial side. You can see the quality of the mirrored anglage on the edge of all the bridges. You can also see that the edge of these bridges, the edges of these bridges have been alternately satinated and mirror polished. Turning it all over, you can see graphics that mention the philosophy en français of Grubel Forcy. And only 33 of these watches were made, so it is an exclusive piece. 39.6 millimeters, very wearable. This is my kind of Grubel 4C. This is Grubel 4C for the guy who would ordinarily be considering Voudelain and Dufour, Laurent Ferrier, those kind of watches. This watch wears beautifully, and I can recommend it for wrists as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. And frankly, the same goes for this watch right here, a 2017 launch. 
white gold, black dial, 39.5 millimeters. It is the Alango Unzona 1815 flyback chronograph. Flyback chronograph, reset and restart with just a push of the trigger at four o'clock. The dial is made of sterling silver and then black galvanized. It has a lovely pulsation, or I should say, pulsation scale outboard with a little bit of a Ray Hot tilt to it. And what this does is it allows you to gauge the pulse of a patient. So you have a 30 pulsation scale, you start the chronograph while holding the pulse, and you count to 30 while the watch does the timing for you. As soon as you hit 30, and let's say we hit 30 now, 30 pulses, you could see that the instantaneous pulse rate is just about 180, maybe 179. So that's how the pulsation scale works. It's often called a doctor's scale. White gold hands, of course, sterling silver dial, black galvanized, flyback action. And then on the reverse side, we have a version of caliber L951, as you'll see on the datograph, but because all of the complications on the datograph up down or on the dial side, the case back of the 1815 and the datograph, identical. You have the same lateral clutch column wheel chrono, the same enormous slow beating balance here. Both of them have the second generation datograph power reserve of 60 hours. We do have a hacking or stop seconds function. You can see that is effectively a free sprung balance. We have both black polished and blued screws. We have jewels set in golden chiton. We have silver steel chronograph components and golden hued nickel copper zinc German silver bridges and plates with freehand engraving on the balance cock mirrored on gouache on the edge of every surface whether steel or or German silver and then you can see there's engine turning on the base plate with a satination under the balance and glasuta stripes across the top of the bridges. Also note that there are several sharp exterior and interior angles finished onto the yoke of the chronograph. You can see it moving right here. Take a look at those details because they're difficult to finish in softer watchmaking materials, ferociously difficult to finish in stainless steel. This is a beautiful watch that gives you everything the Dotto gives, but something it doesn't, which is a thin and wearable profile, as this watch sits a lot lower on the wrist than the Dottograph. An easy watch to wear for him or for her, I consider it a unisex option and possibly the best time-only chronograph you can buy today. Here's a watch that won the complication prize, the GPHG in 2013, and is being discontinued this year. The watch that made Romain Gautier a celebrity among collectors of independence. It's the logical one, and it's a limited edition of five pieces. This is number five of five. I would say with a series, you're either gonna get your lucky number, and everyone has his own, you're gonna get number one, or you're gonna get the last one. And those are always the ones to get. You can see on the reverse side just how well Romain Gautier does things like sharp exterior points, and then sharp interior angles, as there are just about too many of these here to count. Now, Romain Gautier from the Valet du Jeu finishes his watches in that tradition. He has watchmakers who do this. He's an engineer, and the style that he chose for his watches was inspired by Philippe Dufour. So if you're wondering why this looks so reminiscent of the well-known patron and senior of watchmaking in the Valet du Jeu, well, it's because Romain Gautier knows Philippe Dufour. The interior of the barrel, as well as its cap, is sapphire, so there's very little friction on the mainspring inside the barrel. You can see there's a power reserve indicator. It is a manual wind, 46-hour power reserve, and there's a stop works, so it will not tell time when it has too little energy to tell good time. So you start winding it by pressing the trigger over at 9 o'clock, and it starts almost immediately as you fire it up. It's an interesting little free-sprung balance architecture. As you can see, both the wheels and the balance are of Gautier's own design. And there is a snail cam with a fusée and chain. This wheel is driven by the barrel. It pulls a snail cam. The snail cam is attached to the drivetrain, which goes under the Grand Faux enamel dial and then drives the escapement. The idea here being, for 46 hours of power reserve, you get constant amplitude about the balance because as the barrel loses its torque and winds down, it pulls a larger effective diameter of the snail cam, increasing its mechanical advantage so that you get that constant amplitude even when the barrel is relatively discharged. Use this little crown up here at two o'clock to set the watch. And the finishing is world-class on both sides. As you can see, the bridge for the fusée and chain system, it's continuously mirror polished over its center. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12 sharp interior angles where mirrored bevels meet. You also have satination on the tops. Frosting on the bridges and plates of the movement, if you look, there's a satination on the 
escape wheel cock and the balance cock. And then you can see that there are these polished channels and mirrored anglage on the edge of the bridges, but then the bridges on their face are all satinated with a sandpaper-like texture. The watch is 43 millimeters in diameter, and as you can see, the detailing of the case is just as intricate and thoughtful as the movement itself. Throw it on my wrist. I actually think this is a watch for a pretty big wrist. 16 centimeters circumference or larger feels just about perfect for this watch. So if your wrist is my size or larger, I recommend the logical one to you. If your wrist is any smaller, look for the Romain Gautier HM, HMS, or Insight Micro Rotor. But if you want the Romain Gautier from one of the hottest independents of our time, a discontinued line, and from a brand that only makes 50 to 60 watches of all models per year, you want the logical one, and this is a great way to get it, this combination of black Grand Faux enamel and yellow gold. We've got a little bit of a Richemont presence on today's show. Here's a model launched in 2015, a 250 piece limited edition in rose gold, really red gold, with a metallic blue sunburst style. This is the IWC Portugueser digital date month chronograph. It is a perpetual calendar, so it is the digital date month perpetual calendar chronograph, and it's not just a chronograph, it is a flyback chronograph. All of this with the Kurt Claus perpetual calendar system in an arrangement that first debuted on the Da Vinci. You could see it uses a quick set system that moves everything in sync, and I'll demonstrate how this works. But as I adjust the calendar, you can see it has the date 10, 11, 12. As I adjust, it's mechanically programmed so everything moves in sync. All I have to do is set the correct date for the month I'm in. Now watch the month. The month jumps, and eventually, so will the leap year indicator. So this watch is a digital date month with perpetual calendar that can handle irregular length months and years. Now you can also see it features a mono counter at 12 o'clock, two superimposed hands, one with a 60 minute format for the chronograph. Not every chronograph has a 60 minute register, this does. And then under that there is an hours hand that allows the watch to have a wonderful sort of cruciform symmetry. You can split it two ways and keep the dial symmetrical. Turn it over, you have caliber 89801, 68 hour power reserve, flyback chrono, perpetual calendar, hacking seconds, quick set, free sprung, 28.8 beat rate, IWC Kurt Klaus perpetual calendar system, and long before the time even of Kurt Klaus, you have the Albert Peloton Paul-based winding system, and this version of the Peloton is a four-pawl system that is more efficient than the two-pawl system, so you get that bonus as well, and of course this is a manufacturer movement made by IWC, and unlike most limited edition IWC watches, you can see this one is individually numbered out of its series of 250. It doesn't say one out of 250, it says this is a specific number, I believe number 51, I think this one was. And you can see it looks great, but again, you need a big wrist. You need a wrist that's at least as large as mine, 16 centimeters circumference or larger, because this is a big and memorable multi-complication. From Kerry Voodlinen, we have this Vontweet GMT, the 28 GMT, a watch launched in 2014 based on the Vontweet launched in 2011. It is 39 millimeters in platinum and a wonderfully hefty thing that's beautifully made with a real rose lathe guilloche dial. And then you have genuine artisanal engraving for the day-night disc that also represents the GMT. You adjust the GMT, the second time zone, it's coaxial with the constant seconds at six o'clock. You do this by pushing the crown. There's a little index underneath the hands and you set whatever the current time is in your reference time zone. That is the zone where you are not. We have white gold indices, tri-Arabic numerals, and then if you look carefully, you can see the hands are made of several different pieces that are alternately polished and fired blue and then assembled together to create the distinctive Kerry Voulin and hand form you see here. And that's just the work that went into the hands. You can see the engraving on the day-night disc inside the GMT display. Turn it all over, 65 hour power reserve, manual wind with a double direct impulse escapement using blue to escape wheels. This is the caliber Vontuit. A uh, platinum case, as you can see, it's a hefty watch. It features a full deployment clasp, which is not a common feature on Voodoo and watches. You can see it's nicely made and anything but a generic design as this was custom made for carry. 
Now the watch features lovely cow horn lug profiles. These you expect on a Voodoo and timepiece. And then the reverse side, a gilded movement. It has this lovely rose gold tone. And the finish is surpassing. We have a full balance bridge for an enormous balance that beats way to stately and aesthetically pleasing 18,000 vibrations per hour. We have both Phillips and Grossman curves on a hairspring made by hand with two overcoils, inner and outer. And that allows the balance to beat consistently and the hairspring to breathe concentrically in any physical position with respect to gravity. As with F.P. Journ in his Chronomet Souverain and Chronomet Bleu series, Carrie Voudelin takes the power source and the escapement and separates them as there's no visible means of transmission. You can see the train for the bridge, but the actual wheels are hidden underneath the dial to better open up the movement for visual access. You can see right down to the base plate quite well. Traditional pocket watch inspired center wheel architecture and then finger bridges, again in the pocket watch tradition, leading down to the escapement. The double direct impulse system helps the watch to improve its precision, regularity, and power reserve. And again, it's a 65 hour manual wind reserve. You can see that the edges of the bridges are beautifully rounded and broad, lovely mirrored on glage. You can see there are sharp interior angles on the train bridges where two bevels meet, not easy to do, nor is the black polishing of an entire specular finished and completely rounded balance bridge. All of the screw heads are black polished with chamfered slots and circumference. We have a solarization of the ratchet wheel with a mirror polished center. <clears throat> and then my favorite detail, although you can't quite see it, you can see a little bit of a glint and gleam. The individual teeth of the ratchet wheel have been mirror beveled on their edges. That is something that almost nobody will do at any price point at any level of volume. Put it on the wrist, it wears beautifully. It's a unisex option. It's short across the wrist, as you can see here. The lugs are nowhere near the edge of my wrist. I think you might be able to get away with wearing this on a wrist as small as 13 centimeters in circumference. I always save the best for last, and for me, the best is De Betune. Now, they've made fewer than 3,000 watches since their founding in 2002. They make about 150 watches a year these days, and since 2010, the single definitive model in the catalog has been the DB28. The original one won the GPHG Aiguidor, the grand prize at the Oscars of watchmaking back in 2011. This watch, launched for 2020, was a 10th anniversary special celebrating a decade of the DB28. This is the DB28 X. P. 43 millimeters in grade 5 titanium. What sets it apart is its thickness, which I measure at 8.6 millimeters. The lugs adjust from 54.5 millimeters across the wrist to 50.5 millimeters as they are variable geometry and spring loaded. You can see the case has been engraved using micro light strakes. This is De Betune's version of Guilloche on the reverse side. Simple, no nonsense, more of that micro light along with a bluing process, the bluing of titanium that De Betune has patented. The dial includes black polished capping of the barrel bridge, satination of the barrels, the micro light radiating out from an imaginary center point over the middle of the balance, fired blue titanium hands, triple parachute shock protection. Let's get a little bit closer to this dial. So you have one, two, three shock protection springs protected by at least six different patents. You can see little polished globes of titanium acting as the hour indices. Now, the watch also includes a flat hairspring shaped by hand, two pieces clamped together, so they breathe concentrically like an overcoil, but they give you the shock resistance and low profile and thinness of a flat hairspring. You can see that the finish is high horology and very traditional, even if the design is extravagant and avant-garde. Now, one thing I always like to do is start these De Betune watches not running because I want you to see the balance design. It's blue titanium with most of the mass out in the little white gold bulbs that sit on the edge of the balance. De Betune has patented at least eight different balances, and then they have one separate design for their tourbillon regulators. Now, this watch has a six-day manual wind power reserve with twin self-adjusting barrels, which means you cannot accidentally overwind it, even though it's manual wind. It has protection against that. Now... The crown is also a screw down for absolute security. You can see how it beats away. No sacrifices. It has a 28.8 beat rate. A lot of long power reserve watches have a low beat rate to make up for the 
need to have a long power reserve. This gives you a long power reserve and a contemporary beat rate. Look at all the black polishing. That's done with diamond paste. Debatoon making movements, dials, and cases all in-house. Look back to 2011, the second year on the market for the DB28, and they launched the DB28 Tourbillon. Here we have the tourbillon system they first introduced on the DBS tourbillon in the mid-2000s. We have blackened bridges. We have those little globes of titanium for the hours. And you can see another balance design. The entire cage from Debetun for the tourbillon, the whole rotating assembly is 0.18 grams, and Debetun tourbillon watches are accurate to within one second per day. They beat at 36,000 vibrations per hour, like a Zenith El Primero does, and Zenith tourbillon movements have a five-day power reserve when it's just a tourbillon. That is, just a tourbillon and not a tourbillon and a jump hour or a secondary complication. So not only does the escapement beat away at 36,000 vibrations per hour, but once the tourbillon starts up, it doesn't move in one one-minute circuits like a conventional tourbillon on a modern watch would. No, it actually moves in 30-second circuits, so it is twice as fast as a traditional tourbillon, and it beats considerably quicker. By the way, both of these watches, I'll fire this one up, both of these watches are 43 millimeters in titanium. This one's 11 millimeters thick, this one is 8.6. We still have the floating lugs here, as you can see. And on the reverse side, you have a power reserve indicator, so it is a double complication, as it has the tourbillon on the dial side and the power reserve indicator on the back. Now, I should mention, not everyone considers a tourbillon to be a complication. I do, because it significantly complicates the watch. And it has an aesthetic function, even if most tourbillon aren't there for the purpose of chronometry, they look good. This one is here for the sake of chronometry, which is why you have a titanium tourbillon cage, a silicon escapement, a silicon wheel with a white gold rim. Everything about this tourbillon is geared towards chronometry from its speed to its engineering to its weight to its materials. It is truly one of the most purposeful tourbillon watches you will encounter as it actually looks good, sounds great against the ear because it's got that double step cadence and it keeps good time. Remember, most brands making tourbillon watches won't attest to an accuracy. At Debitune, tourbillon watches run one second per day or better. If you like those watches and you want them to run one second per day or better on your wrist, reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.